Hello students, welcome to lecture 9 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture will be on photonic band structure, computation and analysis. So here is the lecture outline. Today we shall be discussing band structure analysis of photonic crystal, band structure engineering and also analysis of band structure for the standard lattices. So let us start with this particular topic. So here you can see the image of 1D, 2D and 3D photonic crystals. Okay? So these are basically periodic arrangement of dielectric objects. right? And uh, one important thing to remember here is that lattice constant is basically comparable to the wavelength of light. Now this photonic crystals are new artificially created materials in which refractive index is basically modulated periodically. And that scale or you can say the lattice constant okay, is of the order of the wavelength of light of operation. So here you can see three different photonic crystals. So this is the vertical cross section of the 1D photonic crystal and this is a horizontal cross section of the same. So you have some material and then air, material, air and so on. Okay? And this is the brilliant zone of the 1D photonic structure. So the center is marked as gamma and middle of this particular edge is marked as X. So these are the two important points as you can see in this 1D photonic crystal. Here you can see a vertical cross section okay, of uh, 2D photonic crystal. Okay, it looks like a beautiful structure which is repeating periodically in both x and y dimension and this is the horizontal cross section so this tells you about you know the height of the you know finite height of this particular crystal and you can see this beautiful patterns which are seen here right so they are forming a nice hexagonal array okay so this is the brilliant zone of this 2D photonic structure which is also hexagonal in shape. So there are three important points here which is gamma, j and x. Okay? And here is the vertical cross section of a 3D photonic crystal and this is the corresponding horizontal cross section and uh, you can see this is the brilliant zone of this uh, 3D photonic crystal and these are the important points which are marked here okay? that tells you about the irreducible brilliant zone. So we will get to know the concept of brilliant zone in more details in this particular uh, lecture and we will see that how these are calculated. Okay? Now why it is important because all these things enables us to engineer, create and engineer the photonic band gap and also allows us to localize light okay? at a particular defect point. So these have potential in applications such as optics, optoelectronics, microwave techniques, quantum engineering, biophotonics, acoustics and so on. So there are lots of applications which we have already discussed before in the earlier uh, lectures, initial lectures. But these are the photonic crystals that allow us to achieve those applications. Now let us start with real and reciprocal lattice. Okay, so this is how Bravais lattice or real lattice looks like. Okay, so a Bravais lattice is basically an infinite array of discrete points, as you can see. Okay, they can be in three-dimensional space depending on the periodicity of the crystal. Okay, so for a three-dimensional system, you can okay, write as L a1 plus m a2 plus n a3. So a1, a2, and a3 are basically the primitive lattice vectors okay? and uh, L, M and N are the integers right? and uh, this actually can form or you can refer to any you know, translation along the lattice using this translational operation okay? R. And here is an example of uh, Bravais lattice in two dimension. Why we use two dimension and example because it is easy to visualize. Here we can see square, hexagonal, rectangular, oblique and centered rectangular. I am not going to details of these parameters which we have already discussed in the previous uh, lecture or so. 
So, from that what is important is that the concept of uh, uh, Wigner session. Okay? So, how do you actually uh, construct Wigner says primitive cell? Okay? So, this is an example of a primitive cell in which a unit cell containing exactly one lattice point. Okay? So, how do you do that? So, you see this is the lattice. Okay? So, you can only pick any particular lattice point and the, the, you can highlight it as a red one okay and you want to find a region or locus of the points in space which are closer to this uh, lattice point than any other lattice point so if you remember briefly uh, how we discussed it in the previous lecture you got to draw the lines connecting um, the neighboring lattice points and you got to draw the you know perpendicular bisector so anything that within this region in this region will be closer to this atom or this lattice point than this lattice point right similarly if you take this connecting line and bisect it so the points within this region will be closer to this lattice point than this one and you repeat it for all so when you add up all the space you get this hexagonal uh, region or space which is your Wigner sheet cell. So, what is this Wigner sheet cell like any primitive cell is basically a fundamental domain for uh, the discrete translational symmetry of the lattice. So, if you take this okay, as a primitive cell and repeat it periodically you will be able to form the entire lattice. Okay? And if you take the you know Fourier transform of this uh, Wigner sheet cell what will happen? You actually go to the reciprocal lattice space and the primitive cell in reciprocal lattice in the momentum space or the, or the K space is called the Brillouin zone. Right? So, it is very similar concept. So, in physics the reciprocal lattice represents the Fourier transform of another lattice usually a Bravais lattice. So, Bravais lattice is the real lattice. If you take Fourier transform you actually transform from x y coordinate space to momentum space which you can write as k x k y something like that. Okay? So, the reciprocal lattice of a reciprocal lattice will give you back the original lattice. Right? So, it is something like you know because the two, Fourier, the two lattices are Fourier transform of each other. So, in normal usage the first lattice okay, whose transform is represented by reciprocal lattice is usually a periodic special function in real space and uh, is also known as the direct lattice. So, while the direct lattice exists in real space and is what one should commonly understand as a physical lattice, the reciprocal lattice actually exists in reciprocal space which is also known as the momentum space or K space. So, the reciprocal lattice is important uh, because it plays a fundamental role in most analytical studies of uh, periodic structures particularly in the you know theory of diffraction. So, the diffraction pattern of a crystal can be used to determine the reciprocal lattice vectors okay, of the lattice. So, using, the, using this process one can you know uh, infer the atomic arrangement of the lattice. It means if you take a lattice and record its diffraction pattern uh, by shining light on it. Okay? So, that diffraction pattern actually reveals the information of the reciprocal lattice and from that you can actually infer the how the um, real lattice should look like. Okay? So, a brilliant zone is nothing but Wigner sheet cell of the reciprocal lattice. So, a brilliant zone is basically a particular choice of the unit cell in the reciprocal lattice. So, if you take a square um, lattice and you can actually, so this is basically a reciprocal lattice okay? and if you try to find out uh, the brilliant zone using the same method that you only focus on this particular lattice point and try to draw the uh, region which is closer to this adjacent points like this. So, you actually get this square. Similarly, you can repeat the exercise for this hexagonal lattice or uh, triangular lattice and you end up getting a hexagonal pattern 
as your or hexagonal space as your brillian zone now the importance of brillian zone stems from the block description of the waves in a periodic medium in mathematics and solid state physics the first brillian zone is uniquely defined primitive cell in reciprocal lattice so in the same way the bravais lattice is divided into wigner schist cell in the real lattice space the reciprocal lattice is basically broken up into brillian zone and the boundaries of the cell are given by planes related to the points on the uh, reciprocal lattice right so the solutions of this block waves in the periodic medium can be completely characterized by their behavior in the in a single brillian zone so brillian zone basically contains the information of how wave will propagate in the entire lattice so if you only study the brillian zone you get to know about the entire lattice property so now let's have a quick look on the block wave equation so a block wave is a type of wave function for a particle in a periodically repeating environment more commonly you can say something like an electron in a crystal so if you consider a wave function psi is a block wave if it has got this particular form so if you can write psi r equals e to the power i k dot r u r where r is the position psi is the block wave u is basically a periodic function with the same periodicity as the crystal okay then you can say that psi r is basically a block wave okay so what is k k is the um, vector okay which is the wave vector right now the electron wave functions in a crystal have a basis um, consisting entirely of the block wave energy eigenstates okay so this fact underlies the concept of uh, electronic band structure right so block wave energy states are written with subscript uh psi and k where n will tell you about the band okay so you can also say that n is the band index right so it tells you that which band is present okay because there are many different block waves with the same wave vector okay so each may have different periodic exponent u so within a band that is for a fixed value of n okay psi n k varies continuously with k as does its energy of the band so if you think of any reciprocal lattice vector k okay capital k so you can write psi n k will be equal to psi n k plus capital k okay that means all distinct block waves occur for k values within the first uh, brillouin zone of the reciprocal lattice and after that it simply repeat itself now let us compare um, the wave equation in a semiconductor and a, in a photonic crystal right so due to the analogy between the schrodinger equation and the wave equation it seems that we can control electromagnetic wave inside periodic lattice uh, like we can control electrons in semiconductors right so here is a here is how schrodinger's equation look like and this is how wave equation looks like so here you can see um, psi r is basically a scalar wave function okay and uh, h omega r is basically magnetic field component of the em wave okay and we will discuss in the subsequent lecture that why we prefer to work with magnetic field component other than um, electric field components right so if you use Schrodinger's equation and from this eigen um, value equation you can try to obtain the uh, val val mm, value of uh, energy which is basically uh, supported in this particular uh, crystal semiconductor crystal and you can obtain the electronic band structure and the same exercise you can do for uh, the photonic crystal and if you consider a square lattice like this you can obtain a band gap okay so here also you can get a band gap and you can see that uh, this is the band gap okay of between the first and the second uh, 
bands okay you can also have some higher order band gaps here also you can see this is the band gap between first and second order uh, bands and then you know you can also have higher order band gaps so what is important here is to see that we this is for the square lattice this square pattern with k values ranging from minus pi by a to pi by a gives you a square balloon zone but out of symmetry you can only work with this one this triangular region and go across you know the points like uh, gamma x m and gamma and that can give you the entire band structure so we'll discuss this in details into this lecture okay in the subsequent slides so band diagram analysis right so band diagrams are a compact but uh, incomplete means of characterizing the uh, electromagnetic properties of a periodic structure right so it is essentially a map of the frequencies of the eigen modes as a function of the block wave vector beta so if you consider um, this okay it tells you that there is a crystal periodic crystal which has got a permittivity of epsilon r okay and uh, the wavelength is lambda in this particular medium okay so what do you have this uh, block wave vector okay so wave number the modulus of the wave vector gives you the wave number that is 2 pi by lambda right so the eigenvalue uh, problem solver can be written as you know the, the equation can be written as curl of 1 by epsilon r curl of uh, h okay so that is equal to k naught square h okay so here k naught square okay Mm, for beta that is this gives you the eigenvalue and this is the eigenvector and i can be any integer so in order to construct a band diagram we make small steps around the perimeter of the irreducible brilliant zone and then compute the eigenvalues at each step so if you take this 3d photonic crystal okay which is basically fcc lattice or a diamond lattice so this is the first brilliant zone of an fcc uh, uh, lattice and you can see that you can start from point uh, so what are these uh, kx ky and kz these are basically the primitive reciprocal lattice vectors okay and these are the important points okay along the periphery of the irreducible brilliant zone so here you can see you can start from x then you move to u then you move to l then you move to gamma then you move to k then w and then back to x so that is how you are basically traversing this entire brilliant zone irreducible brilliant zone along its boundary so anything in between you are actually calculating in between this uh, all these directions are basically um, covered so these are all telling you about the different directions of the wave vector okay fine so that way you car you are actually looking for solutions of which frequency of the eigen function or you can say eigen mode satisfy this that equation right so you can find you can see here that there is a photonic band gap okay obtained so this is what has been explained clearly so you take out this particular uh, irreducible brilliant zone and then you walk around the periphery you will get this particular sequence so it is not that you need to start with x and end with x you can start traversing from u also and then take make sure you go through all the points and come back to u okay that will also be fine so it's just a choice okay now let's look us uh, now let us look into band structure engineering so when you work with band structure engineering block theorem is a very important mechanism to understand how it works okay so the field inside a periodic structure basically takes on the same symmetry and periodicity of that of the structure according to the block theorem right so we understood that er the electric field okay will have an amplitude term and then you have this uh, phase term which is given by e to the power j beta r now 
given the lattice translation vectors we can mathematically define periodicity so you can say this amplitude term is basically showing periodicity as t r plus t is same as a r sorry a a r plus t is same as a r where t is your lattice vector right so maxwell's curl equation for non magnetic medium you can pick this up from the initial discussion so what you can do you can uh, replace this magnetic field by uh, the electric field okay in the first equation and then you can obtain the so what you can do you can derive the wave equation for the magnetic field by taking curl of the second equation so it will become become curl of curl of h will be equal to this constant time curl of e and instead of curl of e you can do the substitution from uh, the first equation and you will get something like this okay so according to the block theorem the magnetic field is periodic as it follows this particular form so you can write hr equals hr beta and e to the power j beta r okay so if you substitute this particular form into the wave equation that you have seen you will obtain this particular equation so what is this okay so the wave equation what we have just seen is basically eigen value equation it is something like you know l is a wave equation operator okay that is working on this field magnetic field and giving you a scalar times a, the field again so this is basically you know the eigen value right so eigen value problems have a discrete solutions something like modes in wave guides um, that are all orthogonal right it means they are very different to each other and this means that you know the solutions of electromagnetic waves in periodic structure also exist as uh, discrete modes and they will be called as block modes now the fields can exist as also linear combination of uh, the different eigen modes or block modes of the lattice so you can think of writing h as summation over beta alpha beta times you know h beta it means you know you can have this different linear combination also forming a block mode which is supported in that particular crystal now the variational theorem states that the lowest energy state satisfying the wave equation minimizes the following variational equation okay so omega beta by c not whole square it can be written as minimum of you know uh, integration of this term divided by epsilon uh, e square okay so to minimize this equation what you have to do your your best just looking for minimum of this equation right so to minimize this you need to maximize the denominator of this equation so denominator of this equation has got permittivity and the intensity of the electric field right it is basically e square right so this would happen uh, when most intense field will reside in the high permittivity region so you can have you know this product to be very large as compared to you know if this is small this product will go small so what you want you are filled to be more mostly concentrated in the high permittivity region and that is how the field of the lowest order prefers to be in the high permittivity region and we can see that okay later on so to understand why we get band gap you just recall three important rules the first one is that the block modes must have the symmetry as uh, same as the lattice second rule is that electric fields of the lowest order would prefer to reside inside the higher index region okay and the third one is that modes must be orthogonal so they should look very different so if you see this particular uh, band diagram okay so this particular mode is the mode of the lowest order and it prefers to be in the you know higher uh, dielectric constant material so if you think of the periodic crystal having two uh, different dielectric constant n1 and n2 
by convention the darker region is higher refractive index so it is n2 is greater than n1 and uh, this n1 plus n2 thickness this this thickness is called uh, gives you the periodicity a and that is only repeated okay so the first thing the block modes must have the same symmetry as the lattice yes it does okay then you satisfy this one okay that the electric field of the lowest order should be here and then you have to see that you know the modes must be orthogonal so in that case you know you got to have the modes the second mode should be having peak in the uh, lower refractive index region so this is important because if you have two modes with the same periodicity but different effective index then only it is possible that they are of different omega right so they are having same you know uh, beta but they are having different omega fine so that is how you can see that the second band okay will have this kind of a profile so now let us look into the calculations of reciprocal lattice vector so if you re recall the formula that you have seen in the last lecture so if you take a 2d lattice you can consider the you know a reciprocal lattice vectors to be capital t1 and capital t2 and uh, the direct lattice vectors or real lattice vectors to be small t1 and small t2 so this is how you can actually calculate um, capital t1 and capital t2 from small t1 and small t2 and vice versa the same thing can be extended to you know 3d lattice so they here in reciprocal uh, space you will have three primitive lattice vectors uh, which is capital t1 capital t2 and capital t3 and you can calculate them from the direct primitive uh, lattice vectors or you can say primitive lattice vectors of the direct lattice small t1 small t2 and small t3 using this formula and you can do the reverse operation as well so with the with the value of real and reciprocal lattice vectors and their you know interchangeability you can understand that you if you know the information of one lattice you can always uh, interpret the other lattice right so now let's look into band structure analysis of standard lattices so let's first consider a square lattice so this is basically the unit cell of a square lattice so what is this lattice you can think of a beautiful dielectric cylinder okay of uh, epsilon 1 permittivity okay and uh, the neighboring region is air but as i told you by convention you can think of you know the darker region to be the material and material of higher refractive index so in that case you can consider this as a cylindrical hole which is air okay and this is your material so if you take this square uh, unit cell which is having you know dimension of a and a okay so and repeat it periodically you basically get this particular square lattice of cylindrical holes okay now because it's a um, 2d lattice you can only think of you know as circular holes so what is there to know about this lattice first we need to find out the direct lattice vectors then we need to obtain what is the wigner shades primitive unit cell in this case which is repeated periodically to create this uh, direct lattice then we should obtain the reciprocal lattice vectors identify the brillouin zone in which we should be able to find out what is our irreducible brillouin zone and mark those key points of symmetry and finally obtain the electromagnetic band diagram so that is how you will be able to analyze a periodic structure completely so now, now let us begin with identifying the direct lattice vectors so you can consider t1 and t2 as your direct lattice vectors so t1 is basically a x cap or you can write as a 0 okay and t2 is nothing but a y cap so you can write it as 0 a right so this is how t1 and t2 are marked in the original lattice right so using that information you have these equations okay 
that can help you calculate the reciprocal lattice vectors capital T1 and capital T2. So once you put them into place you will find that capital T1 is 2 pi by a x cap and capital T2 is 2 pi by a y cap. Okay? So one more time to put them side by side this is how our uh, direct lattice vectors look like and this is how our cap, uh, reciprocal lattice vectors look like. Now, so the brillouin zone okay so the brillouin zone is basically the primitive unit cell in uh, reciprocal lattice so typically the unit cell is centered around zero so you can write instead of having you know 2 pi by a you can write 0 to 2 pi by a you can make it symmetrical from minus pi by a to plus pi by a okay for beta x that is uh, along the x direction you can write and uh, for beta y you can also write minus pi by a to pi by a. So how do you find out the irreducible brilliance zone in this case? Okay. So first question you will ask does the unit cell have up down symmetry? The question uh, the answer is yes. So it has got up down symmetry and you can say the upper part is same as the lower part okay the next question will be does the cell unit cell have left right symmetry the answer is again yes okay so i think uh, it has to be tilted the left right symmetry is like this okay so it should be red painted here it should be painted here okay and not here hmm. so you understand right this is left right symmetry so if you say that you can only take this particular region okay and think of that okay if i have only this quarter information huh, using left right symmetry and up down symmetry i'll be able to recreate the entire brilliant zone yes now the last question that we will ask that does the unit cell have 90 degree rotational symmetry. Now if you rotate this uh, unit cell by 90 degree does it look same the answer is yes and if so then you can only use uh, this half of this particular uh, area and then use the rotational symmetry to combine it. So this becomes your irreducible brilliant zone. So first you will get, get this irreducible brilliant zone you will use the rotational symmetry and then you, is, you will use left right symmetry and then you will use up down symmetry to get the complete square brilliant zone fine. So now let us uh, identify the key points of symmetry which can be calculated from the reciprocal lattice vector. So gamma is always at the center. So you mark it as gamma equals 0, you can write it as 0, 0. X is at the middle of uh, one of the edge. Okay? So X is basically half of uh, capital T1. So that is pi by A comma 0. And this is at the corner point. So you go half this way and half this way. So it's basically half of T1 plus half of T2. So you can write this point as you know pi by A, pi by A. Right? So this is how you can express the key points of symmetry of the irreducible brilliant zone of a square lattice. Fine. So this is what we understood. This entire square is basically the reciprocal lattice. This red highlighted triangle is basically the irreducible brilliant zone. And then if you want to cover all the points here in this you have to move around the periphery of this and come back to the same point so you can start with gamma then you go to x then you go to m and then come back to gamma like this okay so this way you come back to gamma so here also you see what you are doing you are basically having your gamma is basically beta 0 0 x is basically pi by a comma 0 so a has been taken as uh, 1 okay this is pi by a comma pi by a and then you get back to 0. So in between you can have all these different values okay. So that tells you about you know how you move around. So from here to here 
okay so what is y is 0 okay and you can improve uh, you can take different values of you know this and go from 0 to 3.14 once you have reached this point okay your y value is fixed sorry the x value is fixed the y value will change so 3.14 here remains same only the y value will change and that should also change from 0 to 3.14 in different steps so these are the steps you have taken okay and uh, when you go from here to here okay you are basically at 3.14 3.14 that is x coordinate y coordinate okay from here you have to go to 0 and 0 so you can determine the steps in which you want to go and then these are the different points of beta for which you will be calculating the band structure so you can take more finer points or less number of points okay depending on your calculation fineness that you require to get a smooth line okay so this is the band diagram that you will obtain once you calculate for all these different values of beta okay so this we have already seen in the initial uh, slides so here one thing to note is that you are using frequency which is normalized so this is basically a by lambda so that helps you uh, in finding out um, if you have a given wavelength you can actually find out the required uh, lattice constant of the square lattice to obtain this kind of a band gap right okay so we understood how we construct uh, band diagrams so this is basically nothing but in the x axis you have nothing but the wave vector beta or k that is spanning across the irreducible brilliant zone and here you calculate the frequency of those modes which can you know um, satisfy that wave equation right so few places there are no solutions means for this particular frequencies there is no solution to the wave equation it means wave for those frequencies cannot propagate through the crystal and that is what is the band gap or the forbidden bands now how do you get complete band gap okay so what you have seen here is that you know this is the full brilliant zone in two dimension so beta x beta x and uh, beta y okay and this is how you know uh, if you try to visualize that this is the first band okay then this is the second band this is the third band okay this is how where you have your you have got your normalized frequency right so to visualize the um, relation between complete band diagram and uh, and a band diagram we'll start with the complete band diagram first okay so this is a complete band diagram right and then we consider this irreducible brilliant zone and then vertically extend them as walls okay and uh, we'll actually try to focus on so this is the complete band diagram and then once we have raised these walls we'll try to see the cross section of these bands with those walls okay so this is how the bands will um, intersect with this uh, band diagram or bands these walls will interact and then if you open up this uh, irreducible brilliant zone okay so you can continue gamma x and m so you have gamma x m and gamma so when you open it up so this is what we see as the band diagram right so this is the complete band diagram okay and this is the band diagram that we see to describe things right so i hope it is uh, easy to understand okay so this ordinary band diagram typically tells you all the story okay however dealing with this kind of diagram or drawing it is not very straightforward so if you only deal with uh, the band diagram in the irreducible brilliant zone that will give you the complete information about the lattice we'll take another example here let us consider a hexagonal 
lattice so this is the unit cell here again you have a cylindrical hole but this time the uh, unit cell is a uh, hexagonal structure so the radius is 0.35a that's also you know is a lattice period so this is uh, normalized so epsilon 1 is 1 so that is air and this is some material which has got a dielectric constant of 9 and this is how the extended lattice looks like. So again we will try to uh, see all these different points in this case. So first of all let us consider uh, this uh, geometry of the hexagonal lattice. So in hexagonal lattice each side is A. So if you take the distance from this point to this point that is basically 2A. However, the distance point from this point to this point is root 3a, right? So, you can actually calculate this, it is very simple because the angle it they make between to this point and this point is 60 degree. So, you can actually do basic geometry and find out these distances. So, if you consider the direct lattice vector, so in this case, these are the direct, direct lattice vectors T1 and T2. So, T1 can be written as A by 2 x cap okay, minus A root 3 by 2 y cap. So, this you can see from here also. So, T1 is basically marked like this. Okay. So, it is halfway here which is A by 2 okay, and then you have to go down by root 3 by 2 A. So, it is root 3 by 2 a y cap. Okay. Similarly, um, T 2 is a by 2 along x and then a root 3 by 2 along y. So, once you have known small t 1 and small t 2, you can use this formula and calculate capital T 1 and T 2 straightforwardly. Okay. So, capital T 1 and T 2 comes out to be this. Okay, 2 pi by a x cap minus 2 pi a root 3 y cap and T 2 will be um, 2 pi by a x cap plus 2 pi by a root 3 y cap. Okay. So, the primitive translation vectors or the direct lattice vectors are basically the ones that connect the two adjacent sites okay. and all sites in this uh, lattice should be reachable through some kind of you know integer combination of uh, this uh, lattice vectors. Something like if you want to reach to this particular uh, site, it simply you know from here you can extend it right. If you want to go to this one, you have to uh, go like this and then you can extend this one and you can go to this particular uh, site and so on. Okay. So, we will see here the Wigner set uh, primitive unit cell calculation which we skipped in the square one because we have already discussed once. Okay. So, here you can see that this is the direct lattice and uh, the unit cell is a uh, hexagonal. So, if you consider these two points okay, and uh, you are mainly focusing on the center point lattice point. So, if you take these two points and then draw this particular line that bisects the region. So, anything that falls within this area, I will use the laser. So, anything that falls within this area is actually closer to this point. Similarly, when you consider this lattice point and this one, so this is the center um, point. So, if you draw this line, so anything within this side of the line is closer to this point than this point right and you repeat this exercise what you get is like this so you add up all these different areas so this 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 and this you will get a hexagonal uh, unit cell inside and that is nothing but the Wigner set cell and if you put the primitive lattice vectors there so this is how t1 bar and t2 bar will look like okay so so, this is the direct lattice. Okay. So, this is how, so this is the conventional unit cell, okay, which we could have repeated to obtain the actual 
big lattice. So these are all in real space or direct lattice. From that you can actually calculate what is the Wigner shade cell. So if you repeat this cell also that will also give you the you know uh, periodic lattice. So we have seen how to define the primitive uh, lattice uh, vectors T1 and T2. Similarly, you can also calculate, so this is the direct lattice, this is the reciprocal lattice. You have calculated what is capital T1 and capital T2 which are basically the reciprocal lattice vectors. And now in the reciprocal lattice, you can also do the same kind of calculation or method that you have done for Wegener stage cell and find out what is the brilliant zone. Something like if you take this point and this point, so this line marks the area, this particular line will mark the area where the points here are basically closer to this one. Similarly, if you consider this point and this point, this particular line considers the region which is closer to this point and so on. If you repeat it, you will get this particular hexagonal shape which is the brilliant zone. So this one is a conventional reciprocal lattice unit cell okay? and these are the coordinates marked and this one is the irreducible this one is the brilliant zone. Okay? From that we can also apply those concepts of uh, rotational symmetry, up down symmetry and finally we can actually see that um, if you apply this symmetry that whether this part is symmetric to up and bottom the answer is yes. So you can only consider one part. And then you can consider whether these two parts are equivalent, the answer is yes. And then whether if you rotate it by 90 degree, it is okay, it is reproducing the same structure, the answer is okay. So you can only go for this kind of cell, okay. So this becomes your irreducible brilliant zone, okay. So what we understood, let us mark. So this bigger thing is the conventional unit cell of reciprocal lattice. The one here is basically the brilliant zone and this one is the irreducible brilliant zone for hexagonal lattice. Now let us mark those important points. So gamma is the center, M1 is basically you can see it is half of T1 and uh, K is basically one third of uh, T1. Uh, plus one third of T2 and that will give you this K vector. So once you have these three points uh, gamma, M and K, okay, gamma, M, K, I think it's uh, th this particular figure is not correct, okay. It should be gamma then say M, so here it is, it should be M, okay not x okay and this so what do you do you can actually don't you don't need to look into this one okay you can simply mark uh, this as gamma this as uh, m and uh, this as k okay so you can and this will be gamma this is not x this will be m okay and uh, this will be k right and this is gamma again. So you can start from gamma, gamma to M, then to K and then back to gamma. So you will have gamma, M, K, gamma, right? So like this. So do not look into this particular calculation. This is I think by mistake uh, I have repeated the uh, same thing from the previous slide. It should be ideally gamma, M, K gamma. Okay? So if you do the calculation, you see that you get this is your band structure. Now this, this is the band diagram and uh, what you can see here that at least you know 5 uh, different electromagnetic properties can be estimated from a band diagram. First thing you can talk about the band gaps then you can based on the band gap you can also discuss about the transmission reflection spectrum you can discuss about the phase velocity group velocity dispersion and so on 
So, let us take one example. So, okay. So, let us take this particular Venn diagram and uh, try to read out the information. So, here you can see that we are basically considering uh, a square array. Okay. And uh, the darker region tells you that this is basically an array of dielectric cylinders okay, with uh, refractive index NH equals 3 and the lighter region is having refractive index NL equals 1 and the radius of this uh, cylinders are basically R equals 0 0.35A. Okay. So, th with this particular square array, you can actually calculate what is the points, important points over here, okay. And uh, N, Y, Gamma, X, M are the uh, important uh, points and you can see that you could have actually gone in only one side, but it's fine. It shows you the symmetry thing, okay. So, what you can see here is that at this particular point, okay, if you take the okay let's start with the blue lines okay so the blue lines that you see over here are basically the bands of this particular uh, lattice right and uh, there are some dashed lines also seen which are basically in gray okay so these dashed lines are representing the light lines okay that means if you don't have this thing and you just have you know a homogeneous uh, that is how it will look like. Now, at gamma equals gamma beta equals 0, okay, that is here, which means you know it is very basically very very long lambda with respect to lattice, okay. So, at this particular point, you know, the wavelength will be able to see the periodic crystal as a average material, and that is why you can see that here the blue line and the dashed line are more or less you know overlapping but as you move away from this point gamma okay so you are actually having um, wavelengths which are now getting comparable to the lattice and the wave will start interacting with the lattice and that is why you will see the deviation of these dashed lines okay from the blue lines and this is what is called dispersion. So, this is something also very important that we can see from the band diagram. Now, if you consider the slope of a line connecting a point uh, on a band to the gamma point. So, if you take the slope of that line, you can find out what is the phase velocity. Okay? So, Vp is omega by beta. Okay. And normal at that uh, point on the band, okay, if you take a normal of uh, at that particular point on the band, okay, that will give, give you uh, the group velocity, which is basically derivative uh, in the k space, okay. So, it is basically d dou omega by dou beta, right. So, this also tells you, you know, the speed at which the power flows. And here you can see that there are some, uh, you know, this region, there is a wider gap, okay. But here the overall gap b for all the direction is only this gray region. So, this is the band gap, okay. So, the band gap has to be for all the directions. Here also you can see that uh, the gap here, the yellow region here marks a wider gap between only in this region, but overall in this particular case, you know, the gray region marks the band gap, okay. So, if you look into the transmittance spectrum, okay, so this is 0 and this is 1, so this is the highest transmission. So, what happens when you hit this particular band gap, your transmission is basically dropping to 0 and then you recover and go to uh, high transmission. Okay, and wherever you are hitting the band gap, your transmission drops to zero. So there can be multiple bands band gap at higher frequencies in a particular crystal, right? So this is all about the lecture on photonic.
band structure computation and analysis i hope you understood how band diagrams are obtained and how a the normal band diagram can gives you the information of the complete band diagram the 3d one that you have seen okay so if you have got any queries regarding this lecture you can write an email to me mentioning mooc and photonic crystal on the subject line thank you mm -hmm.